Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. All praises to the Heavenly Father in the name of his anointed son, Jesus the Christ of Nazareth, born in Bethlehem of Judah, that sitteth on the right hand of the Heavenly Father in heaven. And it's Christ sitting on the right hand of the Father that's adding unto the church the gathering of the 12 tribes of Israel. Daily such as should be saved. So we're going to read from the book of John, chapter 14, verse 12. Because what we are here preaching is what's known in Acts 2.42 as the Apostles' Doctrine. As a matter of fact, let's start there first. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Let's read that. Acts 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 42. And they continue steadfastly in the Apostles' Doctrine. And they continue steadfastly in the Apostles' Doctrine. So when we read this chapter, the apostles of Christ preached repentance to the children of Israel by the power and authority of Christ. Many Israelites believed in Christ out of the apostles teaching that Jesus of Nazareth is the Lord and Christ of Israel. What these men were teaching out of the law of Moses and the books of the prophets and the Psalms of David that Jesus Christ of Nazareth that was crucified and killed two months earlier during the preparation of the Passover, what they were teaching was that he is the Lord and Christ of Israel, the Messiah of Israel. And many Israelites believed, repented, and were baptized in water. And these Israelites that Peter and the apostles were teaching, they continued steadfastly meaning grounded in the what doctrine in the apostles doctrine in the apostles doctrine the apostles doctrine is the doctrine or the teachings of the disciples of Christ the apostles of Christ and the apostles doctrine were the commandments that the Lord had given had given unto his apostles throughout his earthly ministry but just as importantly after his resurrection from the dead when he was with him for 40 days after his resurrection so it's telling us here that they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and what and fellowship fellowship so the fellowship is going into the brothers and sisters of israel that the most high was gathering under christ and the apostles to be shepherds and pastors over they were continually they were continually in the scriptures the teachers of the apostles and the fellowship was based on the doctrine that the apostles were preaching but the apostles doctrine that we're reading about here in acts 2 42 it didn't come from them it didn't come from men it came from christ and the doctrine that Christ gave the apostles, that doctrine was given to him of the Most High. Read on. And in breaking of bread. So breaking of bread is going into the Lord's communion. Of uh, the apostles of Christ and the believers in Christ repenting, they were breaking bread amongst one another. That's known as the Lord's communion. The breaking of bread and drinking wine, that's a communion, that's a commandment of Christ. That's symbolic of the body and blood of Christ. So we do that often to memorialize our Lord's suffering and death on the cross when he spilled his blood. We do that to memorialize his death until his second coming. As we're growing in Christ, being born again. Continue. And in prayers and in prayer see so the church of christ which is the gathering of the 12 tribes of israel we're all in one accord in the teachings of the apostles so now let's go from there let's go to john 14 and 12. let's read that where the lord was was telling his disciples 
about this ministry. Because on that day, we're going to go back to Acts 2, Lord women. The Lord added to the church 3,000 souls. And that was by the power and authority of Christ sitting on the right hand of the Father in heaven. So we're going to go back to this Apostles' Doctrine, Acts 2. But we're going to start in John 14, 12. Let's go there. John 14, verse 12. By the way, this is the day that Jesus Christ was going to be crucified and killed. Let's read it. Verily, verily, I said unto you. Verily, verily, I say unto you. These are the words that Jesus Christ of Nazareth was speaking unto his disciples. Peter, Andrew, John, James, Thomas, Bartholomew, Philip, and the rest of the disciples. Verily, verily, I say unto you, meaning truly, truly, I say unto you, that he that believeth on me, he that believeth on me, to believe on Christ is to believe, to believe in Jesus is to believe that he is the Christ or the Messiah of Israel, the son of the living God. That's what he meant by he that believeth on me. He that believeth that I am the Christ, the Messiah of Israel, the son of the living God. He that believeth on me, read on. The works that I do. The works that I do, read on. Shall he do also. Shall he do also. The works that I do, those that believe in me, that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God, they shall do also. So when we examine the works that the Lord was doing while he was on the earth, Jesus Christ was bringing many of the children of Israel to repentance. He was raising the dead, healing the sick. The Lord Jesus of Nazareth, by the power and authority of the Heavenly Father, did many great, powerful works. And he's telling his disciples, the works that I do, shall you do also. So a lot of us can hear that and say, wait a minute. How can men on earth do the works that Jesus Christ did? That's impossible. How can a man do greater works than Jesus Christ? Some of us might say that. But what is the Lord saying to his disciples that the Father gave unto him to teach them the doctrine that they in turn would teach beginning at Jerusalem according to Acts 2. Where the Lord would add unto the gathering of his people. Let's read it. The works that I do shall he do also. Read on. And greater, wo and greater works than this shall he do. And greater works than these shall he do. <laughs> so do we understand what's being written here? Do we understand what the Lord Jesus of Nazareth was speaking unto his disciples? He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, if you believe on me. And greater works than these shall he do. So not only is the Lord telling his disciples, that the works that he was already doing by the power and authority of God, they would do. But he went further to say, you're going to do greater works. Now some of us are really scratching our heads. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. How is man on earth doing the works that Christ did and greater works? Some of us might say, well, that's impossible. Is a man on earth greater than Christ? Absolutely not. The next part is going to explain. How were those that believed upon him? Meaning believe that he is the, the Christ, the son of the living God. How would those men, beginning with his disciples, that believed that, do the works that Jesus Christ did? 
and greater works. Multitudes of Israel were repenting from their sins and becoming disciples of Jesus Christ. Harlots, thieves, murderers, fornicators, idolaters. Many of the children of Israel was the most high converting to the most high, to the most high. He was converting many of the children of Israel onto the most high, just like his predecessor, John the Baptist. So the Lord, after John's ministry was coming to an end, the Lord is hearing how the talk in the land of Israel is that this Jesus of Nazareth is baptizing and making more disciples than John. And when you read about the prophecy of John the Baptist coming in the spirit and power of Elijah, the prophecy was that he would turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. And he did just that. To make people of people prepared for the Lord to usher in the Messiah of Israel. Then Christ and his disciples' ministry begins after the Lord is baptized by John. And they're saying, this man baptizes more disciples than John. So let's read on. And greater words than these shall he do. So how is man on earth beginning with the 12 disciples? How are they going to do the works that Jesus Christ did? And greater works than what Christ did. Some will say that's impossible. How can any man on earth do the works that Christ did? How can any man do the works that Christ did and greater works than what he did? That can't be to the kingdom of heaven. No, this is going to happen in the disciples' lifetime. Read on, brother. Because I go unto my Father. Because I go unto my Father. So through Jesus Christ being crucified and killed and buried for the, our sins, because he that knew no sin became sin for us. That we may be made the righteousness of God in him. So remember, it's not possible that the Lord Christ be holding of death. Neither his body suffer corruption in the grave. The Most High raised the Lord from the dead three days and three nights after his burial. And he was declared to be the Son of God with power. That was the glory that the Father gave unto Christ. When he, Lord, the raised, when he raised the Lord from the death, from death, he was declared to be the Son of God with power. And after his resurrection from the dead, he was with his disciples for 40 days. And he spake to them of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God for 40 days. It tells us in Acts 1 and 2 that he gave commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. That's what's known as the apostles' doctrine. The apostles' doctrine that we read about in Acts 2.42, those were the commandments that Christ gave to his apostles. For 40 days after his resurrection, the Lord spake to his disciples of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and how they would receive the promise of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So on the day that the Lord is going to be risen from the dead, they thought by them receiving the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, what did they say? Lord, would thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Why would they ask the Lord if the kingdom was going to be restored to Israel at that time? Because he told them in just a few days, you shall receive the Holy Spirit. So they thought it was nation time, kingdom time. And why would they ask the question, Lord, would thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel unless the Lord had taught his disciples that the kingdom of God is the kingdom being restored to the 12 tribes of Israel through Christ. Because the prophecy in Luke 1 was that he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. That's the covenant that the Most High made with David that of the fruit of his loins 
one of his descendants would sit upon his throne and rule over the 12 tribes of Israel forever. But they thought it was going to be at that time. And the Lord said, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power to restore the kingdom of Israel. That you shall be witnesses unto me at Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. So they didn't understand there were more Israelites than the Father was going to gather. And, though, and although Christ wouldn't be with them physically, he would be with them in spirit, in the form of the Comforter. Because Christ told his disciples in John 14 and 12, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you. So the spirit of truth is Christ. It's not a camp. It's not a made man Israelite camp. It's not a man-made religion. It's not a camp you join and that's the spirit of truth in there. The spirit of truth is Christ on the right hand of the Father. Let's read on, brother. John 14, verse 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask so in my that name. Last, read that last part in John 14 and 12. Because yes, what? Because I go unto my Father. Right, so read the whole verse now. John 14, verse 12. Barely, barely, I said unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go unto my Father. Because what? I go unto my Father. So the disciples of Jesus Christ would do the works that he did and greater works than what he did because what? Because I go unto my Father. Because Christ would ascend to the Father to sit on the right hand of God to fulfill the prophecy that was written of him in the book of Psalm 110 verse 1. And David in the Spirit said, The Lord being in the Most High said unto my Lord Jesus Christ, Sit down at my right hand. I make that pose that footstool. So the enemies of Christ is going to be made his footstool at his second coming. So then he's sitting on the right hand of the Father. And it's Christ sitting on the right hand of God that's gathering the 12 tribes of Israel throughout the four corners of the earth. And tell us that in Acts 2 47. The Lord added to the church, what church? The gathering of the 12 tribes of Israel. Daily, such as should be saved. So that 3,000 Israelites that believed in Jesus Christ, and I was trying out of the scriptures, they repented from their sins, they got baptized in water under the power and authority of Christ for remission of sins to receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which is the comforter. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. The spirit of truth, the spirit of the Most High in Christ. The Most High making known His words unto us. That's the spirit of truth. It's not of men. It's not something you join. It's not a camp you join and now you in the truth. Christ said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's why the Lord, how we say, sitting on the right hand of the Father. Because He's our high priest and our mediator and intercessor between us and the Most High. We're not dealing with the Levitical priest. We're under the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. That's the Lord Christ of Nazareth, born in Bethlehem of Judah, that grew up in Nazareth, Galilee. That's our high priest. Be down, brother. So, so because the Lord would go unto the Father in heaven, that's how they would do the works that Christ did. So when you read about the ministry of Christ, the Lord raised Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus was dead for four days. And the Lord approached the burial place where Lazarus was. And Martha was like, Lord, by, by this time, his body's sticking. He told, he told Martha, he said, didn't I tell you already that I am the resurrection and I am the life? So he went in the place where he was buried. He said, move the stone. He said, Lazarus, arise and come forth. And Lazarus came out the grave alive. The Lord called him out of the grave and raised that man from the dead. The disciples in the book of Acts were raising the dead as well. Why? Because we're reading. 
that the works that Christ did, his own disciples did. Read the next verse. John 14, verse 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. And whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in prayer. In my name. Meaning by my power and authority. Read on. That will I do. That will I do. See. So I tell you in the book of Acts chapter 1. That disciples were in the upper room praying for the Holy Spirit. And in Acts 2 during the Feast of Pentecost. I said the Holy Spirit sounded like a rushing water. And the Holy Spirit fell upon the disciples of the Lord. They were endued with power from on high. They tell you that they began to speak in tongues and they, in different languages they began to teach that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the Lord and Messiah of Israel. Out of the law of Moses, the books of the prophets, and the Psalms of David. And many Israelites that heard the word, they were pricked in their heart. And they said, many brethren, what shall we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for remission of sins, that you may receive the gift of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And it tells you, they that gladly received his word were baptized, and they were added unto the church, 3,000 souls. 3,000 Israelites were added unto the church. What is this church? They don't have a name. We don't put a name. We already got, we the children of Israel. We're not dealing with ABC camp names. That's a man to promote idolatrous man worship. The church that Christ came to gather is the gathering of the 12 tribes of Israel. The most already gave us a name. Jacob, Israel. Get that, let's go hold that, get Isaiah 44 and one. And let's read about the promise of the outpour of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 1. Read that. It says, Yet now hear, O Jacob. Yet now hear, O who? Jacob. Jacob. Yet now hear, O Jacob. Who is Jacob? The father of the 12 tribes of Israel. Read on. O Jacob, my servant. O Jacob, my what? Servant. So Jacob is the servant of the Most High. We're the people of the Most High. Go ahead. And Israel. And who? Israel. And Israel, the 12 tribes. Whom what? Whom I have chosen. So who did the Most High choose above all nations? The Israelites. And among these Israelites is the Israelites that humble themselves as children. Because the greatest in the kingdom of God are those that humble themselves as a child. Characterized by faith and humility. Go ahead, bro. Verse 2. Thus says the Lord. Thus said, so the Lord said, fear not. Why did he say fear not? Because the Most High punished us for breaking his commandments. And as a people, we're down and out. And it seems like there's no hope. But there is hope. We're going to read it here in verse 2. Thus says the Lord that made thee. Thus saith the Lord that made thee. And formed thee from the womb. And formed us from the womb. Go ahead. Which will help thee. Which will what? Help thee. So our, our help don't come from the most high. That's why he's our power. You know? Fear not. Fear not. Why? Because we're in the condition of our people being down and out. We're under the curse of Deuteronomy 28 because we broke God's commandments. But there's hope. What is this hope? Let's read on. Fear not, O Jacob. Fear not, O Jacob. My servant. My servant. And thou, Jezreel. And thou what? Jezreel. Jezreel. Jezreel is another way for Israel, for saying Israel. For example, when you read in the book of Deuteronomy, you read about Jezreel. It tells Moses was king in Jezreel. Meaning Moses was a, a king amongst us Israelites. So whenever you read about Jezreel, Jezreel means like upright one. So Jezreel is Jacob. Jezreel is Israel. So read that part again. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jezreel, whom I have chosen. Fear not, thou, Jezreel, O children of Israel, whom I have chosen. Go ahead. For I will pour water upon him. For I will what? I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. For I will pour water living spiritual water upon him that is what? Thirsty. 
thirst. For the ones of us, Israel, that's thirsting for righteousness, thirsting for the righteousness of the Most High. What did he say? Read that part again. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. The Lord said, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. This water is symbolic of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the comfort, the spirit of truth, which is Christ in the form of the comfort. One more time, read that. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. That's why the Lord, Yahushua Nazareth, when you read on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, what did he say? He that believeth on me. As the scripture has said, meaning as it is written in Isaiah 44 and 2 and 3. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. What scripture was the Lord talking about? He was quoting Isaiah 44. So read it from the top one more time, brother. Isaiah 44, verse 3. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. And floods upon the dry ground. And floods of living spiritual water upon the dry ground. That's why John said, these rocks, the Lord can raise up a people on him. Think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham, your, that you have Abraham and your father. The Lord is able to these rocks to raise up a people onto the world. Onto himself. That's, where, that's symbolic of the Israelites that was dead in trespassing sins, that believed in Christ. And by repenting and being baptized in the name of Christ, receiving the gift of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which is what we're reading here in Isaiah 44. Go ahead, brother. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. I, the most high, through Christ, in the form of the comforter, will pour out upon thy, my spirit upon what? Thy seed. Thy seed. What? Who seed? The children of Israel. That's why Peter said in Acts 2, for the promise is unto you and to your children. And to all that are afar. Meaning what Peter was telling Israel during the Feast of First Fruits was the promise of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was made unto your forefathers. You're the children of the fathers. Any more on that? Yes. Go ahead. And my blessing upon thy offspring. And my what? My blessing. What is this blessing? The outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. Upon thy offspring. Upon thy offspring. That's why Peter said, For the promises unto you and to your what? Your children. The promise of thou, the Most High made a promise with Israel that he would pour out his spirit upon the seed of Jacob, Israel, Joshua. But the only way to experience the blessing of Isaiah 44 3, we got to believe on the Son of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let's prove that. Let's go to Acts chapter 7, verse 37. Let's get it, brother. This is the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 37. I fought John 7, 37. John 4, John 7. John chapter 7, verse 37. Let's read that. John 7, verse 37. In the last day, the great day of the feast. And on the last day, the last day of the great feast. So this was the last day of the feast of tabernacles, which was an eight-day feast that the children of Israel observed that commemorates us dwelling in the wilderness for 40 years and the Most High providing shelter and protection for us those 40 years in those booths of tabernacles. The first day of tabernacles is the Sabbath, a, 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 a holy convocation to gather, and so is the last day. So on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, this is what the Lord Christ spoke 
the people at the temple at Jerusalem. Go ahead, bro. Jesus stood and cried. Jesus stood and cried. So the Christ and Messiah of Israel stood at the temple of Jerusalem knowing that the Pharisees scribes and Sadducees seeking and plotting to kill him. Seeking and plotting to kill the Lord. That's why in the beginning of the feast he couldn't even appear. He couldn't appear openly. His own brothers that didn't believe said, hey, you should do all the works and miracles that you're doing in Jerusalem. There's no man doing these miracles and seeks not to be known that all men may believe. And they had ulterior motives and the hidden agendas why they were or persuading the Lord to go to Jerusalem. The Lord said, look, he said, my time is not yet come. Your time is always ready. My time is not yet come. The Lord knew if he go to Jerusalem during the Feast of Tabernacles, knowing that they were seeking to kill him and he performs miracles, that would only increase and incite their hostility and hatred that they already had toward him to kill him. So he would arrive at, at the feast, but he went kind of by himself. Low key, he didn't go with his family in the way that he wanted that he wanted him to go. And he said, he told him, he said, look, you can go to Jerusalem anytime and you're gonna fit right in. But me, the world hated me. Because I testified that the works were over evil. He said, you you can go to Jerusalem, you're gonna fit right in. But the Lord, when he was around the, among the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees, the Lord always went in on these wicked men. And he spoke against their hypocrisy. Their traditions of men. Their idolatrous man worship. So the Lord eventually did teach during the midst of the feast. And on the last day, what did he say? In the last day, the great day of the feast. So the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, Jesus stood and cried. Jesus stood and cried aloud. Go ahead. Say, say, if any man thirst, let him come unto me. Wait a minute. If any man what? Thirst, let him come unto me. If any man thirst, let him come unto me. That's what the Lord spoke at the temple of Jerusalem. Those of you Israel that's thirsted for righteousness and knowledge, you got to come unto me. Read that one more time, John if, 7, 37. If any man thirst, let him come unto me. Go ahead. And drink. And what? Drink. Drink. The Lord said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Why? Because the Lord has living spiritual water to provide for our people. Read on, brother. Verse 38. He that believeth on me. As the scripture hath said. He that believeth on me. As the scripture hath said. He that believeth on Jesus Christ. There's a blessing tied to that. What is that? And he that believeth on me as what? As the scripture hath said. As it is written in the scriptures. Read on. Out of his belly. Out of his belly, because that's where the spiritual rebirth takes place within us. The most I talk about being renewed in the spirit of our mind. Us being the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob ain't gonna cut it. Christ taught Nicodemus, a master in Israel, a man that was already wearing his fringes rule border, spoke the real Hebrew, kept the most high Sabbath days. He knew about the Passover, the Feast of Tabernacles, the High Holy Day. You could not be a master, you could not be a master teaching Israel and not know you Israel. You had to know the history of Israel. You had to know the law, statutes, commandments of God. You had to already be wearing friends of reward. He even believed that Jesus Christ was a, a teacher and prophet, sent of God. He said, Master, we know that thou art a teacher, sent unto us of God. So Nicodemus already believed in the Most High. He believed that Jesus Christ was a teacher sent from God. He was already keeping the law, statutes, commandments, fringe group order. 
knew he was Israel, and what did the Lord say? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of God. That should have blown Nicodemus away. Because he had the pedigree of pedigree. Circumcised, circumcised the eighth day, like Saul of Tarsus. Uh, he knew he was Israel. Because that's what a lot of these lying Israelites teach you. Yeah, you're teaching our people lies. Once you know you're Israelite and you keep the law, statutes, commandments, and you believe in the Most High in Christ, you're already born again. Brother, you ain't got to get baptized. That's the white man's Christianity. When Saul of Tarsus got baptized to receive the outpour of the Holy Spirit, Cornelius and his kinsmen and his house were baptized. The reason why Peter commanded Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends, which by the way were Israelites, was because that's the commandment of Christ. Water baptism is symbolic of us being joined unto the Lord's death and birth and resurrection from the dead. It's the outpour of the Holy Spirit. The Most High continually cleanses us, cleansing us with the washing of water by the word. That's changing the enemy. So after Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends already received our form, the Holy Spirit, the living water, he said, what forbid of these men to be baptized in water? What forbid of these men water that these should not be baptized? Who's going to stop these men from being baptized in water? That was Peter's question. Whoever received the Holy Spirit as we have, no man forbid them. And then it tells me, and Peter commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Let's read on, brother. John 7, verse 38. And those men received the outpour of the Holy Spirit before they got baptized. Yet Peter was not going to play games with the commandments of the Lord. Because the apostles of Christ, they followed orders. Peter and the apostles, they followed orders. They followed the orders of the master of Israel, the Messiah, the Christ of Israel. Jesus of Nazareth. That was a commandment. Read on, brother. Let's read on about that living water. John 7, verse 38. He that believeth on me. He that believeth on me. As the scripture has said. As it is written in the scripture. What scripture was the Lord quote? We read it Isaiah 44 and 3. Read on. Out of his belly. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Christ said, he that believeth on me, as it is written in Isaiah 44 and 3, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. The Spirit of the Most High, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, is like living water that we can continually draw from and drink that leads to us abounding in the fruits of the spirit and simultaneously purging the works of the flesh. Drug addiction, alcohol addiction, the spirit of fornication, the spirit of adultery, the spirit of covetousness, the spirit of bearing false witness and lying. Those works of the flesh are purged through the outpour of the Holy Spirit. The words of Christ, read on. Verse 39, John 7, verse 39. So what is this living water speaking of? Let's read on. But this spake of the Spirit. Oh, we'll read it again from the top. But this spake he. But this, meaning the living water, spake he. Remember, Christ is talking about living water. So this spake he. Christ was speaking about the living water. This spake he. Of the Spirit. Of the what? Of the Spirit. The living water is the what? The Spirit. Read on. Which they that believe on him should receive. That they that believe upon him, beginning with the disciples, should receive. Read on. For the Holy Ghost. For the Holy Ghost or the outpour of the Holy Spirit. The Comforter, the Spirit of Truth. Read on. Was not yet given. Was not yet given. So when Christ was telling Nicodemus about being born of water and of the Spirit, 
when he was telling the Israelite woman in Samaria about the living water, when Christ was teaching it at Jerusalem to the Israelites at the Temple of Jerusalem on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles about the living water, he was talking about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father that we read in Isaiah 44 and 3. But this is what we have to understand. That the word, the spirit, read on, was because that Jesus was not. No, no, read it from the top again. I'm sorry. Okay. But this may he. So when Christ spoke about the living water, which is the outpour of the Holy Spirit, this may he. Of the spirit. Of the spirit. What spirit? The spirit of the most high. That continue a cleansing with the washing of water by the word. This make he concerning the spirit, we don't. Which they that believe on him should receive. That they which believe upon him should receive. We don't. Be I'm sorry. For the Holy Ghost. For the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was not yet given. Was not yet given. So when Christ was telling Nicodemus about being born of the spirit, when Christ was telling uh, the Israelite woman in Samaria about the living water when he was telling his disciples about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit when you read in not just John the 7th chapter John the 14th chapter the 16th chapter when Christ was telling them about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit the promise of the Father was not yet given to Israel why? let's read on because that Jesus was not yet glorified because that Jesus was not yet what? Glorified. So Israel could not receive the promise of the Father until Christ be glorified. When was the Lord Jesus Christ glorified? When he was risen from the dead and declared to be the Son of God with power. Then he is, after 40 days, he ascended to the Father in heaven to enter into his glory. That's Psalm 121. So when Christ ascended to the Father to sit on the right hand of God, what did the Most High say? You're going to sit here in my right hand until I make my bones down. And one of the offices of Christ sitting on the right hand of the Father in heaven is to give unto Israel the promise of the Holy Spirit. To give it with his disciples. So from there, let's go now to... Uh, Go back to John 14, 13. John 14, verse 13. And whosoever ye shall ask. No, whatsoever. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. So whatsoever we ask of the Father in the name of Christ. Because Christ is the mediator between us between us and the Most High. So when we pray, we pray to the Father in the name of, 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 of His Son. Go ahead, brother. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That will I do. Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, that will I do. So it's going back to the 12th verse. Read the 12th verse again. Barely, barely, I said unto you. Truly, truly, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, He that believeth on me, meaning he that believeth that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Messiah of Israel. Read on. The works that I do, The works that I do, Christ raised the dead, healed the sick, brought many of the children of Israel to repentance. The works that I do, Shall he do also, Shall he do also, beginning with his apostles, the disciples. That's what we talking about. The disciples of Christ would do the works that Christ did. Not separate or side of Christ, but through Christ. Let's prove it. Let's keep reading. And greater works than these shall he do. And greater works than these shall he do. So the disciples are hearing this and they're like, those that believe upon you are going to do the works that you do. And greater works. How is that possible? How are men on earth going to do the works that the Lord did in greater? Aside of Christ? Separate from Christ? 
Let's find out. Read on. Because I go unto my father. Because I go unto my father. Because I go to ascend to my father in heaven, you're going to do the works that I do. And you're going to do greater works than what I do. That's why when you read all throughout the book of Acts, what were the apostles doing? What Christ did. Raising the dead, healing the sick, bringing many of the children of Israel to repent. The apostles during the Feast of first fruits preached Christ out of the law of Moses, the books of the prophets, and the Psalms of David. 3,000 Israelites repented, believed in Christ, and were added to the church. And they tell us in Acts 2.47 that that was the Lord sitting on the right hand of God that did that. Let's prove that. Go to Acts 2.47. We'll, we'll go back to that. All power and authority is subject unto Christ sitting on the right hand of the Father. It's under the power and authority of Christ that the 12 tribes of Israel are being gathered. It's under no man's authority, no man's power on this earth is the gathering of the 12 tribes of Israel. Christ said, and I, and if I be lifted up, all men shall be drawn unto me. This he said, speaking which death he should, signifying which death he should die. The Lord knew that he was going to be lifted up from the earth, nailed to a cross, the same way Moses lifted up that serpent in the wilderness. That prefigured Christ being put on that cross that he was nailed to, to die and spill his blood for our sins. So let's read that. Acts 2, 47. And Christ said, And I, and if I be lifted up, I shall draw all men unto me. So the gathering of the 12 tribes of Israel will always be, it was always under Christ, and it will always be under and through Christ, even today. The gathering of the true sheep of Israel is Christ sitting on the right hand of the Father. That's gathering them by repentance being preached under his power and authority. Ain't no man on this earth gonna get the glory from Christ. No man on this earth. The enemies of Christ are gonna be made his footstool. Read on, brother. Acts 2, 47. Yes, sir. Acts 2, verse 47. Praising God. Praising God. The gathering of Israel under the teaching of the apostles, they were praising God. And having favor with all the people. The Most High was showing favor towards the gathering of the church of Christ among all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Are we hearing what the scriptures are telling us? Who and under is the gathering of the 12 tribes of Israel? The gathering of the 12 tribes of Israel is under and who through who? Read that again. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. How come it didn't say Peter and John and the rest of those men? Because they were just vessels. Paul said one man planted, another man watered. God gives the increase through Christ sitting on his right hand. Peter didn't make a name for himself, make up his own camp. And John make up his own camp. What was the name of Peter's camp? I'm waiting for that scripture. What was the name of the apostle John's camp? Philip's camp. Saul and Tarsus, what was the name? There were no camps. The gathering of the 12 tribes of Israel, that's the Lord's church. You don't have a name. You don't put an ABC name on it. Oh, that's going back to idolatrous man worship. Read on, brother. I won't say no more. Read that last part again. And the Lord added to the church daily. So Jesus Christ, sitting on the right hand of God, added to the what? Church. How come they don't have a name on the church? These camp names in Israel. Because the church is Israel. And the Lord added to the church the gathering of Israel. Read on. Daily. Daily on that day was 3,000 souls. Go ahead. Such as should be saved. Such as should be saved to obtain eternal life. At the second coming of our Lord that sit upon the right hand of God. 
because we're going to attain salvation. Let's get that. Go to John chapter 6 and verse uh, 39. You know what? We didn't finish John 14, 13. Go back to that, then we'll get that. Let's go to John 14 and 13 now. So we read the 12th verse. So go ahead. John 14, verse 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. And whatsoever you shall ask in prayer to the Father in my name. Read on. That. Will I do? So that's Christ is the one that's blessing the church. The Lord is the one blessing the apostles to do the works that he did and greater works than that he did. When Peter raised up Dorcas from the dead, you think that he did that aside from Christ? When the apostles were raising the dead, healing the sick, we had one brother that was still for 40 years of his life. And Peter and John said, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise and walk. Man, crippled for 40 years of his life. Stood up, walked and leaped in the temple. And the people were praising God. And the people looked at Peter and John. Like, like, it was, it was, like it was them. Peter said, look steadfastly at him and said, why you look gazing upon us as through by our own holiness of power we made this man whole? This man is made whole by the power and authority of the Christ of Nazareth. So even Peter and John, by the power of Christ that they healed, that was crippled for 40 years of his life. They never used that miracle as a platform to make a name for themselves, to promote themselves or promote somebody, some type of idolatry of man worship. These men were humble men. That's why the Lord worked through these men. Read on, brother. John 14, verse 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That will what? That will I do. That will I do. It's going to be me sitting on the right hand of the Father doing the works through you. So in other words, it ain't about you. It's about me. <laughs> well, you got a lot of Israelite groups. They make it about themselves. Like you got to join their camp. You got to join their congregation to be in the truth. And Christ is the truth. Christ said, you, the works that I do shall you do also. And greater works than these shall you do. Because I go unto my Father in heaven. Read on, brother. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. I didn't read nothing about no man being praised, worshipped, glorified on earth. Not even Peter. Not even Peter, whom the Lord calls Cephas, right? Peter never gave himself a flattering title to promote himself as some great man, like the gathering of Israel is under him. Yeah, I'm the leader of Israel. And the Lord actually said to Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. And Peter never gave himself a flattering title to, to promote idolatrous man worship. Unlike a lot of these Israelite groups out here, teaching idolatrous man worship. Because they love the praise of men more than the praise that comes from God. Read on, brother. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. That's why I tell you in the book of Acts chapter 3, when Peter and John healed that brother that was crippled for 40 years of his life, that the people praised the Most High. They didn't praise the men. I mean, they looked at him like, whoa, these are some great men. Peter like, look, man, this ain't about us. This ain't about me. This ain't about John. This man was healed by the power and authority of Christ of Nazareth. And then he goes on to say, y'all need to repent and believe on him. But let's read on. Let's read the next verse. John 14, verse 14. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. I will do it. So when the apostles were praying for the Holy Spirit in Acts 1 and they received it, that was of Christ. When the apostles were raising the dead, healing the sick, preaching the word of God with great faith, conviction, and boldness. In Acts 2, we read about 3,000 souls added to the church. 
in Acts 5, 5,000 Israelites repented and believed in Christ. Because the apostles' doctrine is not of men. The apostles' doctrine is not of men. The apostles' doctrine is the commandments that the Lord gave to his disciples. After his resurrection from the dead, he was with them for 40 days. Let's go to Acts chapter 1. Read that, brother. Chapter 1. Want some more to get some more? I believe it. treaties have I made O Theophilus. So who is this speaking? Luke. The book of Acts was written by Luke, the physician. The former treaties is going into the gospel according to Luke. The book of Luke. Have I written? And it was addressed to a brother named Theophilus. Read on. Of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Of all that Jesus began both to do and what? Teach! So the gospel according to Luke records all the works that Jesus Christ did by the power and authority of the Most High and His teaching. Christ taught about repentance. Christ taught about loving God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's the first commandment of all. These preachers in these Christian churches are lying to our people talking about the commandments of God are done away with. That's the law of Moses. The first commandment of all is hear, O Israel. Hear with attention and obedience. Shema Yashava. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. That's the first <laughs> commandment of all. What does first commandment of all mean? There are many commandments that God gave us. But the first of them all is written in Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, and all thy strength. That's why Christ, that's what Christ taught the people of Israel. It's recorded in the book of Luke. And the second great commandment is like unto the first. Because the first commandment is dealing with love for the most high. The second commandment is dealing with love for your brother. That so you can learn to love your brother. You can't learn to love your sister, your wife, your children your father and mother unless we learn how to love God first. With any love that we have toward our wife and children our brother, it's going to be worldly. Christ said on these two, and the second commandment is, thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself. That's Leviticus 19.18. Yet our people being taught, oh, we don't have to keep the commandments of God. The commandments of, uh, of God are done away with. The commandments of God are not done away with. When we teach our people the dietary laws, that we're not to eat swan's flesh. Oh, that's the Old Testament. That's the laws in Leviticus. We don't have to follow the laws in Leviticus. The second great commandment is written in Leviticus. The first commandment of all is written in Deuteronomy chapter 6 of the same book that got the dietary laws in Deuteronomy 14. So we've been lied to. 
It ain't just Israelites lying to us. It's these Christian churches too. Christ got the truth. Let's read on, brother. Acts 1 verse 2. Until the day. Until the day. So the gospel according to Luke records all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Until the day. Read on. In which he was taken up. Until the day that he, Jesus Christ, would be taken up. What is this taken up referring to? Our Lord's ascension into heaven to sit on the right hand of God. The gospel according to Luke records this. Read on. After that he, through the Holy Ghost. After that he, meaning Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Read on. Had given commandments. Had given what? Commandments. Commandments. Unto the apostles. Unto the apostles. So before the Lord ascended on high to sit on the right hand of God, he first gave commandments unto his apostles. So after Christ was risen from the dead, three days and three nights after his burial, because he would be in the heart of the earth for three days, three nights. And the grave could not contain Christ. That's why I said the gates of hell should not prevail against them. The grave could not prevail against Christ. It was not possible that the Lord's body suffer corruption in the grave. So the Most High raised him from the dead because the law was as a lamb without blemish. By the way, the Passover is this Friday coming up at sundown. And Christ is our Passover. That's why John declared him. Behold the Lamb of God was taken away the sin of the world as he's baptizing the Israelites in the world. He said, behold the Lamb of God, there he is. That's the one I've been preaching about. I'm not worthy to bear his shoes. He's preferred before me. He was before me. I'm not worthy to untie his shoes. He's gonna baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And he's also coming with the baptism of fire. What is that fire? Unquenchable fire! Because every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. That's the unrepentant Israelites. Because the trees that's going to bring forth good fruit, those are the Israelites that repent, believe in Christ, they receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's how we're going to become a new preacher. That's what the Lord's telling Nicodemus. Unless a man be born of water and the spirit, he shall not enter into the kingdom of God. That must have blown Nicodemus away. That man had a pedigree like Saul of Tarsus, circumcised, they did. Raised in the law of Moses, a master teacher in Israel. Already wearing fringe blue border, keeping Sabbath days, knows the history of Israel. And Lord tell me he gotta be born again. It's showing you. That this truth is above and beyond known we is Because if that's the case, why Christ got to come? You guys, oh, once you know you're Israelite, and you keep the law, statutes, commandments, believe in the most high Christ, you're already born again. That's not the truth. Nicodemus had that penalty. And the Lord said, a man, unless a man be born of water and of the spirit, and I enter into the kingdom of God. What does that mean by born of water and of the spirit? Like Saul of Tarsus, Ananias baptized him in water. When he came out of water, he didn't come out of wet sinner. Just like Christ, when he came out of that water, praying, it tells us that John the Baptist saw the heavens open. And the spirit of God in the form of a dove descended upon Christ. And lighted upon him. Because the Holy Spirit is tied to us repenting from our sins and being baptized. It's like you feel the effects of the wind. You feel its presence. You don't see it. I mean, it's a spiritual thing. So is every man that is born of the Spirit. 
not a physical thing. It's the spirit. What spirit? The spirit in Isaiah 44. The most high making known his words unto us. We got to repent and be baptized. Like Cornelius and his kinsmen. Like Lydia and her household. How about the jailer? The jail keeper in Acts 16. He got baptized in his household. How about when Philip baptized the eunuch? It said that they both went into the water. He baptized him in the water. And he came out rejoicing. It's not the water that changes us. It's what's tied to be baptized in water. Now I'm pouring the Holy Spirit. You know water on this earth going to make you a new creature. <laughs> you go to Jordan River get baptized in water. It's what is symbolic of. Just like the communion. A lot of these Israelites that reject the water baptism, they also, they don't do the Lord's communion. Not understand the Lord's communion is symbolic of the body and blood of Christ. So it's a physical thing that's tied to the spiritual. When we eat that bread, drink that wine, we're being joined unto our Lord's death until they come. So it's a common union. That every day that we're doing that communion with Christ, he's adding stature, he's adding influence. Same with the Holy Spirit. Let's read on, brother. Acts 1, verse 2. Until the day in which he was taken up. So the Gospel of Luke records the works of Christ and his teachings until the day in which he was what? Taken up. Taken up meaning he was... Christ ascended on high to sit on the right hand of God. But before he ascended on high, he first had to descend into the lower parts of the earth. Before Christ ascended to sit on the right hand of God, after his resurrection from the dead, he first had to descend into the lower parts of the earth. That's where a lot of these um, fake Israelites, these non-Messianics, Making mockery of our Lord, talking about oh, we don't believe in JC. Who is this? How is I JC? They don't understand that in order for the Messiah to sit on the right hand of God, to ascend on high, he first had to descend into the lower parts of the earth. There had to be a death and burial of the Messiah before there'd be a resurrection and ascension into heaven. So these Israelites, these non messianic Israelites that reject Christ, you in some hot water. Mm. Hot water. Because the Most High told Moses, and Peter said it in Acts 3.23, And it shall come to pass that every soul that will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. So our people in hot water, we need to repent. Let's read on, bro. Peace uh, and blessings, bro. Go ahead. After that he, through the Holy Ghost, after that he, Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, had given commandments, had given what? Commandments, commandments, unto the apostles, unto the apostles, whom he had chosen, whom he had chosen, before Christ ascended on high, to sit on the right hand of God, to begin to fill the prophecy in Psalm 110 and 1, he gave commandments, or to the apostles whom he had chosen. What were those commandments? Preach repentance, baptize those, and baptize those that believe in his name. He commanded in the priest that he is the judge of those that are dead and those that are, going, those that are alive at his coming. And he commanded in the priest out of the law of Moses books of the prophets and the Psalms of David that he is the Messiah of Israel and other commandments. That's why we say it, the Most High saying, the Apostle's doctrine is not of men because we're reading that the Lord gave unto his Apostles commandments on what they were to teach. So when they taught in Acts 2, out of the Law of Moses and the books of the prophets and the Psalms of David, that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Messiah of Israel, and they believed and repented, they were teaching what Christ commanded them to preach. And tell you, in Luke 24, the former treaties that Luke had written, that he taught them 
out of the law of Moses, the books of the prophets and the Psalms of David, that he is the Christ the Messiah of Israel. It tells you in Luke 24, then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Christ is the one that opens up our minds to understand the scriptures, to believe and to teach the people. That's why Peter, when you read in Acts 2, he went in, in the law of Moses, the books of the prophets, and the Psalms of David, teaching what Christ commanded him to teach. Then it was the Lord sitting on the right hand of the Most High, telling Peter, go to this scripture. Go to that scripture. Go to Joel 2. Go to Psalm 16. Talk about the covenant the Most High made with David. Hit him with Psalm 110 and 1, Peter. I'm bringing him home to the Father. <laughs> oh, praises to the Most High in Christ. That was the Lord sitting on the right hand of God, putting them scriptures of Peter's and apostles' mind to teach them scriptures. That was the Lord. That was not of men. This is the same Peter that denied the Lord three times. Yet he speaks boldly before the very same men that crucified and killed Christ. Imagine you're, be you're before the very same men that murdered Christ. This is the same Peter that denied the Lord three times. Peter, the Lord told Peter, he said, Peter, Satan is desire to shift you as the weak. When I pray for you, when I converted, strengthen that brother. And he did. Peter came with it. He came with them scriptures. Them Israelites were pricked in their heart. They were getting cut. I tell you, they were pricked in their hearts. Because they realized that this Jesus of Nazareth, whom they, had, they denied in the presence of Pilate, whom they were partakers in killing, God made them both the Lord and Christ of Israel by the resurrection from the dead. It tells you these men were pricked in their heart. And they said to Peter and the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? What did Peter say? Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are for all even as many as the Lord our God and our God. and with many other words the Peter George saying save yourself from this untoward generation and it tells you, and they that, that heard him, glad to receive his word, and were baptized. About 3,000 souls. Who added these 3,000 souls to the church of the Lord? Jesus Christ sitting on the right hand of God. Because these were men chosen. Let's get that Matthew 4. Because he gave commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Let's go to Mark, Matthew chapter 4. We're going to start in verse 17. And the point is in the 19th verse. Let's get it. Matthew 4, 17. Matthew 4, verse 17. From that time. From that time. Jesus began to preach. Jesus began to preach. So this is the beginning of our Lord's ministry in Nazareth of Galilee. The beginning of our Lord's ministry began in Nazareth of Galilee. After he was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River to fulfill all righteousness. The Most High Spirit came upon Christ. He was anointed. The Spirit immediately led him in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil for 40 days after he was a hunger. And Satan kept trying to come against the Lord. Time to draw him away from the Most High. What did Christ say? As it is written, as it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God that man live. Christ was coming out the law to shut Satan down. 
That's how you shut Satan down. When you come out these scriptures. After those temptations, it tells you that the devil flee for a season. And the angels ministered unto him. Then he began his powerful ministry in the land of Galilee. Nazareth of Galilee. What did Christ preach? Let's get it. Matthew 4, 17. Matthew 4, verse 17. From that time. From that time. Jesus began to preach. Jesus Christ began to preach. And to say. And to say. Repent. What did he teach? Repent. Repent. That's what Christ taught. Just like Peter in Acts 2, 38. What was the, what was the, what did Peter preach? Get it. Acts 2, 38. We're going to see the parallel between Christ and the apostles. That's why in the book of Acts, the Pharisees and them, they were like, these men teach and sound just like Christ. Well, it makes sense. Because Christ said, the works that I do, shall you do also. And greater works than these shall you do. Because I go unto my Father. So the disciples didn't raise the dead separate on the side of Christ. It was through Christ sitting on the right hand of the Most High. All praise him. That the Father may be glorified in the Son, not man. I ain't mean, read one scripture where Peter ever promoted himself. I'm the leader of Israel. I'm the leader in Israel. Peter never said that. As a matter of fact, Peter said, The elders which are among you, I exhort, which am also an elder. He didn't call himself, he didn't give himself a flattering title to promote himself. And if any man had a, any inclination to do that, it would be Peter, but he was humble. He didn't do that. Peter knew it wasn't about him. It was about the Most High in Christ. Let's read on, brother. Acts 2, verse 38. He said, the elders which are among you, I exhort, which am also an elder. Feed the flock of God's pasture. That's what leaders do. Leaders don't promote and exalt themselves. Leaders don't promote idolatry of man works. Leaders Feed the flock of God's pastor, and it's the most high waking up our people, not us. You got Israel like, hey, what are y'all doing? We waking up Israel. You know, our people ain't waking up nobody. In actuality, what's happening, like Christ said, you can pass sea and land and make one prosperous. And when you make them a proselyte, you make them twofold more the child of hell than yourself. That's these little idolatrous man worshippers that's joining these different Israelite congregations. All oh, praises to the elders and the bishop and the general and the captain and the It's idolatrous man worship. Be on, brother. Acts 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them. Then Peter said unto them. Let's read before that, verse 36. Acts 2, verse 36. Therefore. Let all the house of Israel know assuredly. Okay, let's stop right there. This is Peter, the apostle Peter, speaking unto the children of Israel during the Feast of Pentecost. So the Feast of Pentecost is about two months after the Passover. Where was the Lord killed? During the preparation of the Passover. That's why he's known as the Passover. Christ was killed before the Passover. He was killed during the preparation of the Passover. So when they killed the Lamb of God on that cross, that was during the preparation of the Passover. When the sun set that day, it tells us in the book of Luke that that day was a holy day. That's the Passover. So Israel eating lamb that night, and the lamb was already killed in Jerusalem. <laughs> so anyway, uh, what verse is that, bro? 36, Acts 2, verse 36. Read that again. Therefore, Therefore let all the house of Israel Know assuredly that all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. That's powerful right there. That's a powerful teaching right there. Right? It tells us that the Holy Spirit came upon Peter and the apostles. And these men spoke boldly. They boldly preached Christ. Remember. Christ is killed on the Passover. Christ is killed on the Passover. Two months later, they're in Jerusalem, the same place. Before the 
the same men that killed Christ. How about that, Israel? Peter speaking boldly before the men that killed Christ. And what did he say one more time, brother? Acts 2 36. It says that God have made the same Jesus. That God, the Most High, have made that same Jesus. Read on. Whom ye have crucified. Whom ye have crucified. Who got together with Pilate and Herod to kill Christ? The wicked of Israel. They were losing members and followers. They had hatred towards Christ. Because their works were evil and the laws were righteous. So just like Cain killed Abel, the Pharisees killed Christ. That's why the Lord called them of their father the devil. He said, you're of your father the devil. He wasn't talking about the so-called Jews or the Romans. He's talking about wicked Israelites that were seeking and plotting to kill Christ. And when Christ called them on it, oh, you got the devil in you. Ain't nobody trying to kill you. <laughs> and they'll, they'll tell you in the beginning of the chapter they were seeking to kill Christ. I'm talking about we, the, we, we be Abraham's seed. The Lord said, I know you Abraham's seed. You don't do the works of Abraham. Because Abraham believed in me. And he rejoiced to see this day. They're talking about we're the children of Abraham. God is our father. We're the children of Abraham. The Lord said, no, you have your father, the devil. Your father is the devil. And you're not the children of Abraham. You're the children of Cain. In Revelation 2 and 9, he called them the synagogue of Satan. A lot of our people have been taught falsely that the synagogue is saying that that's the so-called Jews. That's again, wicked Israelites at the church in Smyrna, persecuting the church in Smyrna. Talking about we be Abraham, we be of Isaac, we be of Jacob. They're persecuting the people of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham believed in Christ. The scriptures tell us the gospel was preached unto Abraham and he believed. And you talking about you're the children of Abraham, but you killed Christ. You're not the children of Abraham. So it's a wicked life, bro. Say, I'm an Israelite. But as an Israelite, you king that you killed the king of Israel. On the other hand, when the Lord saw the down, he said, Behold the Israelite with me, who is no God. Because you got true Israelites, and then you got untrue Israelites. We don't, brother. That God has made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified. That God has made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified. Both wait, Lord. Wait, wait, wait. So, Pilate, Herod, and the wicked of Israel, the chief priests, elders, and scribes, they all came together, brother. They all came together against the Most High and against his anointing. And killed Christ. Two months later, during the Feast of First Fruits, Peter speaking before the same men. Peter one, all the way We don't. Whom ye have crucified. Whom ye crucified. Because Christ was nailed onto a cross and spilled his blood on that cross. We don't. Both Lord and Christ. The Most High made that same Jesus whom you crucified during the Passover. Both the Lord and Christ of Israel. By the resurrection from the dead and his ascension into heaven. Because when you read the verses earlier, what did Peter do? Starting in Joel 2, Psalm 16, verse 8 through 11. He made reference to the covenant that the Most High made with David in 1 Chronicles 17, verse 11 and 12. Then he quoted Psalm 110 and 1. And out of these scriptures, what was he proving? That the same Christ, the same Jesus that they killed in Jerusalem. How y'all came together and killed him? That was written up in the scriptures. So, out of the law of Moses and the books of the prophets and the Psalms of David, Jesus Christ was, Peter was bringing out that the same man that they crucified and killed, the most high made of both the Lord and Christ of Israel. How did Peter prove this? He came out of these scriptures. We 
it on. Verse 37, Acts 2, verse 37. Now, now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Now, when they heard this, they were what? They were pricked in their heart. They were pricked in their heart. What pricked them in their heart? The scriptures. They got cut with the scriptures. Because they all realized we met the that Jesus of Nazareth that we killed. He's the Lord and Messiah of Israel that was written up by Moses and the prophets. So them scriptures pricked them in their heart. What does that mean? The scriptures cut. We've all been cutting the scriptures. We cut up with the Lord. Most I come with that correction. You're like, cut. Those men in Israel during the Feast of First Fruits, remember, because there were three feasts that all Israel had to come to Jerusalem to keep. Passover feast on unleavened bread. That's the feast that Christ was killed. The next feast that Israel had to keep in Jerusalem was the Feast of First Fruits. About two months after Passover on It's a blessing. You understand? So Christ is killed on the Passover. Two months later, the same Israelites that killed Christ, they're there in Jerusalem. St. Peter that denied Christ three times during the preparation of the Passover. Now he's speaking boldly in the name of Christ. That's the work of God. That's not the work of men. Peter to be in the spirit that he was, that was, that was, that could never be of man's influence. That has to be a, of the influence of the power of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which is the comfort, the spirit of God in Christ. What happened in the book of Acts? That was the work of God. Paul said, one man planted, another man watered, but the most high gives the increase. Go ahead, brother. Now, when they heard this. They were pricked in their heart. Scriptures pricked them in their heart. Because they realized all them scriptures pertaining to the Messiah and Christ of Israel was talking about Jesus of Nazareth when we killed, when we crucified. So they were pricked in their heart. So the scriptures were being taught and the scriptures pricked them in their heart. And out of the scriptures they believed in Christ already. Go ahead. And said unto Peter, and to the rest of the apostles and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do men and brethren what shall we do that's a great question the men of Israel that crucified Christ that were partakers many of them in crucifying Christ they asked Peter and the apostles which Acts 1 and 10, Acts, Acts chapter 1 said, chosen men, apostles whom he had chosen. Because who called Peter and who called Peter to become a disciple? Who called Andrew to be a disciple? What about John and James? Did not Christ say? He said, he said, follow me. Behold, I will make you fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men. Don't come from man. Peter couldn't make John a fisher of men. John couldn't make the next man a fisher of men. The Lord sitting on the right hand of God makes us fishers of men. Our job as servants of the Lord is to teach what Christ commanded. We're not waking nobody up. The most high through Christ is waking up our people. That's why Paul said, I'm nothing. Apollos is nothing, Cephas is nothing. One man planted, another man water, the most high gives them. We don't, brother. Acts 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them. Then Peter said unto the Israelites that asked them, What shall we do? We don't. Repent! What did Peter say? Repent! What did Christ say in Matthew 4 17? Repent, right? For the kingdom of heaven is at hand, right, brother? Yes, That's sir. the scripture. Read on. And be baptized. And be what? Baptized. Now, a lot of Israelites going to lie. That's talking about or baptized with the word. Liars. They already believed in Christ out of the word. 
What do you think took them in their heart? Get Hebrews 4 and 12. The word of the Most High. Let's get there. What pricked them in their heart? The word. At the time when these men asked Peter and the apostles, what shall we do? They already believed in Christ out of the word. Hebrews 4 and 12. Read it, brother. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful. For the what? For the word of God is quick and powerful. What did Peter the apostles come with? The word of God. And it came what? Quick and powerful. They went into law of Moses, the books of the prophets and the Psalms of David that proved to prove that this Jesus of Nazareth that you crucified and killed, right along with Pilate and Herod, the Most High made them both the Lord and Messiah of Israel. And how did he prove that? Psalm 110 and 1, a scripture. Psalm 16, verse 8 through 11, scriptures. Joel chapter 2, scriptures. First Chronicles 17, 11 verse to the 12th verse, scriptures. Read on, brother. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Woo, the word of Most High is sharper than any two-edged sword. Read on. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. That's why they were pricked in their heart. Because their heart, by the word of God, was convicted of sin. By the word of God in Christ being preached through Peter and the apostles. With such powerfulness that they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What did Peter say? Read it again, Acts 2.38. Acts 2.38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent! Repent! Just like Christ taught, right, brother? Let's get it. Hold this one, right? Go back to Matthew 4.17. Remember, Christ said, The works that I do shall you do also, including what he taught. Christ was about teaching our people to repent from sin, to turn from sin and turn to the Most High through Him. That's the message. Read on. Matthew 4, verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent! What did Peter preach in Acts 2, 38? Repent! Go ahead. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So Christ began his ministry of Nazareth, Galilee. And what was the message he preached? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Meaning the long-awaited Messiah, Christ of Israel, is at hand. It's time to repent. That's what the Lord is telling our people. What is repentance? When we confess our sins and forsake our sins. That's how we obtain mercy. So let's go back to Acts 2.38. Acts 2, 38. You know what? Hold that. Read the next verse. Matthew 4, 18. Matthew 4, verse 18. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee. So now the Lord is walking by the Sea of Galilee. Read on. Saw two brethren. Saw two what? Brethren. So two brothers, blood brothers. They were the son of uh, Jonah. Go ahead. Simon called Peter. Simon called Peter. So one of the men was Simon called Peter. The same brother preaching in Acts 2.38. Read on. And Andrew, his brother. And Andrew, his brother. So Simon and Andrew were both brothers. Andrew, was, at one time, he was a, a disciple of John the Baptist. And then he became a disciple of the Lord. Go ahead, brother. Casting a net into the sea. So Peter and Andrew were casting a net into the sea. Read on. For they were fishers. For so they were what? Fishers, meaning fishers. So that was the occupation of Peter and his brother Andrew. They were fishermen in the Sea of Galilee. That's how they made their money. Read on. Verse 19. Matthew 4, 19. Read on. And he said unto them. And he said unto uh, uh, Peter and Andrew. Follow me. And he said, follow me. So they're in the Galilee, casting the net into the sea. The Lord comes up to these men. Follow me. Follow me. Go ahead. And I will make you fishers of men. I 
will make you fishers of men. I'm going to make of you, Peter and Andrew, to become fishers. Not fishers of fish, but fishers of men. What's Peter doing in Acts 2? Being a fisher of men. What was he throwing out there? The word of God. Particularly proving out of the law of Moses, the books of the prophets and the Psalms of David, that Jesus of Nazareth is the Lord and Christ of Israel. Read on, brother. Verse 20, Matthew 4, verse 20. And they straightway left their nets. They and right away left their nets. Read on. And follow him. And follow the Lord. Read on. Verse 21. So they became disciples. So this is the begin, beginning of Christ calling certain men into his discipleship. Because he being their master was going to teach them as they being disciples. Eventually, they would be sent forth after Christ ascended into heaven. Sent forth as apostles. And what were they to preach? The same message that Christ preached. So let's read on. Matthew 4, verse 21. And going on from thence. And going on from thence. He saw other two brethren. He saw other two brethren. Go ahead. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. So now the Lord is calling two more men into his discipleship. James and John were both the sons of Zebedee. So you're talking about some four great men. In the Apocrypha, it tells you, let us now praise famous men. So when it's all said and done, Peter and Andrew, John and James going to be in there. Peter was a great man in the scriptures by the grace of God. So was Andrew. How about James? Killed with the edge of the sword. Mighty man in the scripture. How about his brother, the apostle John? The Lord appeared unto him. After the Lord had already been risen from the dead, he appeared unto the apostle John. John turned around and saw him and saw that it was the Lord. He fell to the ground and thought he's going to die. The Lord had to put his hands on him. He said, Rise, fear not. I am Jesus, who is dead and is alive, and I, and I live forevermore. And he, said, and he said, I have the key of hell and death. I have the power to raise from the grave. I have the power to raise the dead from the grave. Because that's when Abraham is going to live again. In the resurrection from the dead through our Lord at his second coming. How about in the book of Maccabees? Second Maccabees chapter 7. When we read about in the span of one day, a mother losing seven sons. At the hands of Antiochus, that wicked Edomite king of the Greeks. Because they refused to eat swine's flesh and partake in idolatrous feasts. One of the sons said, you can take my tongue on my arms, chop them off. The Lord will give them back to me. The king of this earth shall rise from the dead to live again. But you, Antiochus, you will have no resurrection from the dead. So even the Maccabees and the Israelites during that time, they believed and understood in the resurrection from the dead through Christ at his coming. The Lord never preached the devil doctrine of reincarnation. And through witchcraft and worse a man's calling regeneration. The regeneration of Matthew 19, 28 is talking about the Israelites being raised from the dead to be restored again in the kingdom of the Most High. Abraham will live again in the resurrection from the dead. He has not been reincarnated and he's on the earth today walking with some brother. We don't know who he is. Abraham is asleep, man. Him and his wife Sarah are going to be raised from the dead at the Lord's second coming to be heirs together of the grace of life. That's the doctrine that Christ and the apostles preach. That's some devil doctrine of reincarnation. Read on, brother. Matthew 4, verse 21. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship 
with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And he what? And he called them. So the Lord called John and James, the sons of Zebedee, read on. And they immediately left the ship and their father. They immediately left their ship and their father. See, when the Lord call you into the faith, you got to forsake all. So they forsook their ship, departed from their father, and became disciples of the Lord. Now, by the time of Acts 2, they've already been in due with power from on high. Because the Lord told them, John truly baptized with water up to repentance. That ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days after. What is the Holy Spirit? The comfort, the spirit of truth. Which is the spirit of the Most High in Christ. And then after the Lord ascended into heaven, the disciples with the women were praying together in the upper room. <laughs> As they're praying, that the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples. It sounded like a rushing, mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were filled. And it spread like fire. The Holy Spirit was like fire. It tells you that they began to speak the word of God in different languages. Then they teach it to the Israelites in the Hebrew. What we read in here in Acts 2.38, let's go back to it. So at this time, they're officials of men now. So, uh, Acts 2, 38, right? That's where it was. Okay, go ahead. Acts 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them. Then Peter said unto them, meaning the Israelites, they asked them, men and brethren, what shall we do? Because they already believed in Christ out of the scriptures. Go ahead. Repent! Repent! Just like Christ preached. You gotta repent. Y'all murdered the Lord of Israel. Y'all murdered Jesus of Nazareth from the Most High made both the Lord and Christ of Israel. He's the Messiah of Israel. Y'all killed the Messiah of Israel. Read on. Repent and be baptized. Repent and what? And be baptized. And be baptized. Baptized in water. A lot of us, I ain't talking about water baptism, but I'm talking about baptizing with the Word. They already believed in Christ out of the Word. I told you earlier in the verse they were pricked in their heart. So a lot of Israelites saw that's the white man's Christianity, water baptism. So Saul of Tarsus who follow on the white man's Christianity when Ananias baptized him according to Acts 9.18. When Peter commanded Cornelius, which was an Israelite, and his kinsmen, which were Israelites, and his friends, which were Israelites, to be baptized in water, Peter was preaching the white man's Christianity. No, you're teaching devil doctrines. Peter was preaching what Christ commanded him to preach. Teach out of the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms of David that he is the Christ of Israel. When they believe you to baptize him in water. Repent and be baptized. Read on. Every one of you. Every one of you. Some Israelites say, well, if you want to get baptized in water, you can, but you don't have to do it. Who said that? You're a phony elder. Your phony bishop. You got these men in the, the bishop and the deacon. These are flattering titles these men gave themselves. Promoting idolatrous man worship. Like the gathering of Israel through them. Be on, brother. Be baptized, every one of you. Every one of you. Be on. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Being under the power and authority of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, meaning under the power and authority of Christ. Read on. For the remission of sins. So for the remission of sins, you got to repent from your sins and be baptized in water. Because water baptism is symbolic of us being joined unto the death and burial of Christ. So when Ananias baptized Saul of Tarsus in the water, that's symbolic of Saul of Tarsus being dead and buried in that water. As he's coming out of that water, that's symbolic of the resurrection of the Lord. So as Christ 
rose from the dead, Saul of Tarsus is to come under that water, walking in newness of life. It's not the water that changed him, it's what that water is about. The death, burial, resurrection of Christ. What's time to water baptism? We're going to read it. Remission of sins and what, you know? And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So the gift of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is tied to repenting from our sins and being baptized in water. Any man that teaches otherwise, he's proud and he knoweth nothing. And it's teaching devil doctrines. Read on, brother. Acts 2, verse 39. For the promise is unto you. The promise of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was made unto you, Israel. That's what Peter was telling the people of Israel. That's why we read earlier, where in Isaiah 44 and 3, about how the Most High said, Fear not, thou Jacob, and just from whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and I will bring floods upon the dry ground, and I will pour out my spirit upon you and upon thy seed, your children. So the Holy Spirit is a promise that the Most High made with Israel. Not all nations. You got some Israelite groups, they teaching all nations that they're part of the gathering of Israel, baptizing these heathen in water, doing their own thing. Read on, brother. For the promise is unto you and to your children. And to your what? Children. Read on. And to all that are afar off. That's exactly what we were reading in Isaiah 44 and 3. Exactly. So Peter was always, everything he said, it was always coming out of the scriptures. And when he quoted scripture, he didn't do like Satan did. Quote scriptures, take them out of context, and then teach something out of context. That's what Satan does. Like you have Israelites that teach against the water baptism. And they'll read scriptures, take them out of context to teach against water baptism. Any scripture that you've got, Ephesians 5, 20 says, go hand in hand with water baptism, not against it. How you getting one scripture to go against another? Come on now, let's read on. It says, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call unto repentance. Read on. Verse 40. And with many other words did he testify and exhort. So Peter already went into the law of Moses, the books of the prophets, and the Psalms of David. Then he kept coming with more scriptures. Read on. Say. Say. Save yourselves from this untoward generation. What did Peter say out to the children of Israel? The same message that's being preached today. Save yourselves from this untoward generation. What does that mean, untoward generation? Let's go to Mark chapter 8 and verse 38. Let's go to Mark chapter 8, 30. What does that mean, save yourselves from this untoward generation? Let's go to Mark chapter 8, verse 38. Read Mark that. 8, verse 38. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed. That's cold. That's a cold-blooded scripture right there, man. That's the words of the Lord, the Son of God. That's sitting on the right hand of God as we speak. You can't see him, but he's there. The Lord Jesus Christ that was killed and crucified in Jerusalem was risen from the dead and declared to be the Son of God with power, and he's sitting on the right hand of the Father. As we speak right now, 2021, on the Sabbath. And he's adding to the church daily such as should be said. That's who's speaking in Mark 8, 38. That same Jesus. That same Jesus that ascended into heaven said this. Read it again. Went from the top. Mark 8, verse 38. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me 
and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation. Right. So it said, whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words. So how are we ashamed of Christ and his words? Well, Christ taught us to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love our brothers ourselves. He taught us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. He taught us to put off the spirit of murder, adultery, bearing false witness. He taught us to turn from breaking the Sabbath. He taught us to love one another, correct one another. So to be ashamed of Christ and of his words means that we rejected Christ. Where we don't want to apply the teeth of Christ because that means we got to change. We got to repent. I can't sell drugs no more. I can't murder. I can't commit adultery no more. I can't fornicate. I can't bear, I can't live the thug life no more. So they're ashamed of Christ and of his words. Read on. It says in this, it says in, in this sinful, whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, in this, in this sinful generation of him. No, no, of this sinful and adulterous, right? Adulterous and sinful, right? This adulterous and sinful generation. Right, right. So read adulterous and sinful. It says, in this adulterous and sinful generation. Right, so what does it mean by denying Christ? In this adulterous and sinful generation. How are we as the children of Israel adulterous? Well, Jeremiah 3 and 20 tells us, Surely as a wife treacherously departed from her husband, so have you dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel. So by us serving other gods, and by us continuing unrepentant sin, we are committing spiritual adultery against God, and we're living in sin. We're having, we're having friendship with the world because we're ashamed of Christ and of his words. James 4 and 4 tell us, know ye not. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not. That friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. That's why Peter's saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. That's why Christ was saying that whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, read on, of him, of him meaning the man that's ashamed of Christ, rejects Christ, is ashamed of Christ, of him, also shall, also shall the Son of Man be ashamed. Of him shall also the Son of Man be ashamed. So if we're ashamed of Christ and of his words, and we reject Christ, Christ is going to be ashamed of us. He's going to be ashamed of us and reject us. Read on. When he cometh in the glory of his Father. Because Jesus Christ at his second coming is coming in the glory of his Father. And he's going to render unto every man according to his works. That's why John said, bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. Because the axe is laid onto the root of the trees. And every tree that brings them not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Be down, brother. When he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. To render unto every man according to his works. So let's go back to Acts 2. I think we're in the uh, 39th verse. Acts 2 verse 39. For the promise is unto you. Just how we read in Isaiah 44, but it's not just there. Ezekiel 36, Ezekiel 37, and other chapters speak about the promise of the Father, which is the promise of the outpour of the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. And to your children. And to your children. So even the children of the ones hearing it, the promise is unto them. But in order to receive that promise, they got to repent and be baptized. You can't have one with the other. That's like a man eating uh, swine's flesh. And you tell the brother, hey, you broke the commandment of God. You're not following the commandment. You can't eat it. Yeah, I can. If, 
it, it part the hook. Yeah, but it don't chew the cut. It gotta have both, brother. It gotta chew the cut and part the hook. It's the same thing I'm saying. Yeah, I repent, but I didn't get baptized in water. You can't have one without the other. They both go hand in hand. Go ahead, brother. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off. Because the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. But the most high calling us to repentance. Go ahead. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And even as many as the Lord our God shall call unto repentance. Read on. Verse 40. Acts 2 verse 40. And with many other words did he testify and exhort. So Peter coming with more scriptures. <laughs> more scriptures, more scriptures, more scriptures. Go ahead. Say. Say. Save yourselves from this untold generation. Save yourselves from this adulterous and simple generation. Because if you're saying of Christ and of his words, in this simple and adulterous generation, of you shall the Lord be ashamed. When he cometh in the glory of his Father and his holy angels to render unto every man according to his works. Go ahead, brother. Acts 2 verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. Then they gladly received the teachings of Peter out of the word were what? Baptized. Baptized in water. Read on. And the same day. And the same day. Two months after Christ being crucified and killed in Jerusalem. During the feast of first fruits. And that same day. Read on. They were added unto them. They were added unto them. Meaning the gathering of Israel already. Read on. About 3,000 souls. About 3,000 souls were added unto the church of Christ. All praises to the Most High. Imagine that. Imagine you there that day and you see a Peter and Apostle preach Christ. 3,000 souls get caught with them scriptures. They ask Peter and Apostle, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized. They gladly received the word and they were baptized. 3,000 souls. Read on. Acts 2 verse 42 And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. So now, and they, meaning the gathering of Israel, continue steadfastly in the what? The apostles' doctrine. The apostles' doctrine. Meaning the commandments that Christ gave to his disciples to teach Israel. That's the apostles' doctrine. And that doctrine didn't come from the apostles. It came from Christ. And the doctrine that Christ gave the apostles, that came from the Most High. Let's prove both, both points. Go to John chapter 6 and verse, uh, I think it's the 16 verse. 16? Uh, John chapter 7. Chapter 7. Yeah, John chapter 7. I'll get you the verse. Speak about the Holy Spirit. So the 14 verse. John chapter 7, verse 14. Now, about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple. So during the in the midst of the Feast of Tabernacles, because it's an eight-day feast. So during the middle of this feast, Christ went into the temple. Go ahead. And taught. And what taught? He started to teach the word of God, you know. Verse 15. And they used marble. And the what? And they used marble. So the Jews marveled, meaning the Israelites marveled when they heard Christ speak. Read on. Saying. Saying. How knoweth these men letters? How does this man know the scriptures the way he does? Read on. Having never learned. He's not part of our camp. You got to be part of our camp to be teaching the truth. You ain't in the truth unless you in our camp. That's what the Pharisees were saying. How know if this man letter read, letters read on? Verse 16. No, no. How know if this man letters read on? Having never learned. Having never learned means having never learned from us. 
Because the Pharisees were like, you believe in what we teach you. You learn to break down the scriptures from us. So you had many of the Israelites saying, how does this man know the scriptures the way he does? And he didn't teach us. So when you check out the psychology and the psychobabble that's going on, basically what's going on is the only teachers come from us. The only teachers come from us. Read on. Verse 16. Jesus answered them. Jesus answered them. And said. And said. My doctrine is not mine. My doctrine is not mine. My teachings are not mine. Read on. But his that sent me. But his meaning the most high that sent me. Now go to Deuteronomy 18, 18. So we already established the apostle's doctrine is not of the apostle. The apostle's doctrine was given to the apostles of Christ. But that doctrine wasn't given to the apostles of Christ by himself. It was given to Christ of the Most High. That's why we link it, Acts 2, 42, with Matthew, uh, John chapter 7, and John 7, to Deuteronomy 18, 18. Let's read it. Deuteronomy 18, verse 18. I will raise them up. I will raise them up. The Most High was speaking to Moses. I'm going to raise up unto Israel. Read on. A prophet. A what? A prophet. That word prophet is a capital P. Because it tells us in Hebrews 1 that in sundry times and diverse manners, God spake unto the fathers by the prophets. But in these last days has he spoken unto us by his son. So Christ is the prophet that the Most High is speaking to Moses about. Read on. I will raise them up. A I will prophet. I'm, I'm sorry, I cut you off. Can yeah, I read that again? I will raise them up. I'm going to raise up on the Israel. Go ahead. A prophet. A prophet. From among their brethren. What tribe did Jesus Christ come out of? The tribe of Judah. One of the sons of Jacob. Of thy brethren. So we're not trying to hear about no Muhammad, for, for, for Muhammad the prophet, so-called. A madman Arab promoting idolatry. Read on. Like unto thee. Like unto thee, meaning Moses was a mediator and an intercessor between Israel and the Most High. Check out what happened in Acts 32. What happened in Acts 32? Israel made a golden calf and worshipped it. Because their mind was still in Egypt. Their mind was still in Egypt. They couldn't let Egypt go. So Moses in the mouth, dealing with the Most High, Joshua with them. Israel make a golden calf and worshipped it. Then the party begins. Drunkenness, music, fornication. Moses in the mouth is like, what is that that I hear? Sound like war going on. Israel going to war? Most I told him, that's not war you hear. It's, it's, it's the noise of them, that sin that you hear. Most I said, they have quickly turned aside from the way where I commanded them. So when Moses went down from the mountain and went to Israel, he saw Israel, he had the Ten Commandments in his hand. And what did he do? He broke them. Because Israel broke the covenant. One minute we're saying, when God ended speaking the Ten Commandments, all that God says, we will hear and do. You tell us what God has to say. We don't want to hear his voice no more lest we die. So that fear was very short-lived. 
Because Moses told Aaron and the men with him, look, y'all got to hold it down. Y'all got to hold it down. I'll meet with the Most High. When I come back, God show us what to do next. So Moses in the mouth for 40 days, Israel like, hey, what's become of Moses? So what happened? Their heart was already going back to Egypt. They made the golden calf, get drunk, fornicate, just like Mardi Gras, Carnival. Idolatrous feast. Mosai was going to kill Israel. Mosai said, I'm going to destroy this people that you let out of Egypt. And I'm going to make of thee a nation that's going to worship you. And what did Moses do? He made that intercession. He interceded for Israel. He said, Lord, remember the covenant that you made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The people going, in the world are going to say, for mischief did you bring Israel out of Egypt. And had to kill him. Don't do that, Lord. Have mercy on them. And then at one point he said, Look, blot my name out of the book of life. That's whole blooded, man. Both said, Look, blot my name out of the book of life that they may live. But guess what? Moses was not on the level to make that kind of sacrifice. There's only one that could say, Let me die for them. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God without blemish. He that knew no sin became sin for us, that we may be made the righteousness of God in him. So Moses couldn't make that intercession, but there would be one like him that would do that. Who is that? The prophet like unto Moses. Who is that? Jesus Christ. Read on, brother. Deuteronomy 18, 18. I will raise him up, a prophet. So the Most High told Moses, I'm going to raise up unto Israel a prophet, one who would speak my words. Go ahead. From among their brethren. He's going to be born out of the nation of Israel, just like they Israelites, man. Like unto thee. He's going to be like you, a mediator and an intercessor. Read on. And will put my words in his mouth. And I will put my words in his mouth. The Most High will put his words in the mouth of Christ. That's why Christ said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. And they talking about, how does man know the scripture the way he do, having never learned of us? You know who taught the Lord? The Most High. Read on. And he shall speak unto them all. And he, meaning Jesus Christ, shall speak unto them, beginning with the disciples. See, because that's what we got to understand. Remember what the Lord said, because many times the Lord spoke in parables. And then he broke down the parables to his disciples. He said unto them it is not given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but unto you it is given. He said many righteous men and prophets have desired to see and hear the things that ye see and hear have not heard them, that ye have heard them. Blessed are your eyes, blessed are your ears. So the truth of Christ continue to be preached once Christ ascended to the Father would be through his disciples. It didn't start later on in the history of the world somewhere else on this earth. Somewhere in America. Harlem, Boston, L.A. Read on, brother. And he shall speak unto them. And Christ would speak unto Israel, beginning with his disciples. Read on. All that I shall command him. All that I shall command him. So in Acts 1 and 2, when it told us that Christ gave commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, these commandments that Christ gave the apostles were commandments that God gave Christ to teach the apostles. So the apostles' doctrine is not of men, it's not, it's not even of Christ, it's of the Most High. So let's go back to Acts 2. Mark 
Mark 16, 18. All right. Mark 16, verse 18. They shall take up serpents. Um, I'm sorry, Matthew. Matthew 16, 18. Well, that's a good one, too. That is a good one. But I want to get Matthew 16, 18. Matthew 16, verse 18. Verily I say unto you. You know what? Let's read from uh Let's read from uh Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi. And when Jesus Christ came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, so in the land of Israel, this was a province, because this is the time of the Greco-Roman Empire. This is the land of Israel. Go ahead. He asked his disciples. The Lord Jesus Christ asked his disciples. So we in Matthew 16, 13, right, brother? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Saying, saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? So the Lord asked a question to his disciples. The question is, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? The people of Israel, who are they saying that I am? We're not in Israel. What's that, brother? We're not in Israel. We're not in Israel. Right, we're not in Israel. The Lord going to bring us back. We've got to repent. say that I the son of man am because the fame of Christ was going all throughout the land of Israel so a lot of people are talking about this Jesus of Nazareth some of them may have heard of his fame and his works but they didn't know him personally or they might have saw him so a lot of people are talking about Christ because his fame is getting out so he asked his disciples who do men say that I the son of man am read on verse 14 and they said and they said some say that thou art John the Baptist. Now at this time, John the Baptist is already dead. So if Christ was John the Baptist, he would have to be John the Baptist risen from the dead. But he wasn't. Read on. Some Elias. Some Elijah. Some thought that he was the prophet Elijah that was written of in Malachi chapter 4. When Christ taught us that the ministry of John the Baptist was in the spirit and power of Elijah. So no, nope, he wasn't Elijah. Read on. And others, and others, Jeremiah. Some thought that Jesus Christ was Jeremiah. So how could the Lord of Nazareth be Jeremiah? Well, he would have to be Jeremiah risen from the dead. So some are hearing the works of this man of Nazareth. Some are saying, maybe it's Jeremiah risen from the dead. Read on. Or one of the prophets. Or one of the prophets of old has been risen from the dead. He's among us. Read on. Verse 15, Matthew 16, verse 15, he said unto them, and he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? So the Lord asked his disciples, all right, well, some are saying I'm John the Baptist risen from the dead. Some saying that I'm Elijah. Some saying that um, I'm Jeremiah, one of the prophets of old, risen from the dead. Now, who do you say I am? Read on. Verse 16. Verse 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. Thou art the what? The Christ. That's the answer. That's who Jesus is. That's who Yahweh Shah Nazareth is. The Christ. Read on. The Son of the Living God. The Son of the Living God. That's Peter's confession. You're the Christ. 
the son of the living God. You're the Messiah. The Most High's anointed one. Come from God. That's Peter's confession. Go ahead. Verse 17. Verse 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him. And Jesus answered and said unto him. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. Because flesh and blood did not reveal unto you what you just said. Because when the Lord asked his disciples, but whom do you say that I am? John didn't have to go. Say, say he's the, he's the Christ of Nazareth. Say he's the Christ, the son of the living God. Ain't no one had to put them thoughts in Peter's mind. He knew automatically. I know who you are. You're not John the Baptist risen from the dead. You're not Elijah. You're not Jeremiah, one of the prophets of old risen from the dead. You're the Christ, the son of the living God. And, Peter, and Christ said, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh bless and blood have not revealed this unto thee. But what? But my Father, which is in heaven. Which is in heaven. My Father, which is in heaven, revealed that. See? So for any of us to believe that Jesus of Nazareth is the Christ of Israel, that comes from the Most High. That don't come from man. Read on. Verse 18. And I said also unto thee. And I say also unto thee. So this is the Lord speaking to Peter, one of his disciples. In the midst of the disciples. Read on. That thou art Peter. That thou art Peter. His certain, the Lord nicknamed him Cephas, which by interpretation is stone. So that's what this is going into. Thou art Peter. Read on. And upon this rock, I will build my church. And upon this rock, Upon Peter and his confession. I will build my church. The gathering of the 12 tribes of Israel is the church. And it's through and under Jesus Christ. Not no man on this earth. Not even Peter can say, hey. I'm the leader of Israel. Out of all Israelites, I'm the leader of it. And people that join my camp, that's the two camp. Upon this rock, I will build my church. Go to John real quick, John chapter one. So the Lord, through Peter and the apostles preaching, what Peter confessed, that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Because what did Peter say? This same Jesus, whom you have crucified and killed, the Most High made him both the Lord and what? Christ. Peter preached what he confessed to Christ. So really it's not about Peter. It's about what he confessed. That Jesus of Nazareth, that, that Jesus of Nazareth is the Lord and Christ of Israel. John chapter, I'm going to go back to that. John chapter 1. And verse. Forty-one. Let me from forty. John 1 verse 40. One of the two which heard John speak and follow him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first finding his own brother Simon and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. Read on. And he brought him to Jesus. So Andrew brought, he brought Peter to Jesus. Read on. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. So Peter was going to be like a great man 
in the ministry of Christ. And through Peter and the apostles, the Lord will what? Build his church. Let's go back to that. And upon this rock, that's why uh, I think that's the 18th verse. Matthew 16, 18. Matthew 16, 18. And I said unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And upon this rock I will build my church. So he's saying, upon this rock I'm going to build my church. So through the preaching of Peter and the apostles, preaching repentance in the name of Christ, the Lord would add to his church. So the, the church is the gathering of Israel. And the beginning of this church that Christ would build would begin with Peter and the apostles. No time later on in the history of the world, during first fruits, 3,000 souls were added to the church. Who was the main speaker in Acts 2? Peter. Read on. It says, And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And the gates of hell would not prevail against the church because there is no church without Christ. Christ is the foundation of the church. The grave, the gates of hell shall not prevail against Christ. The grave could not contain Christ because it was not possible that he should be holding of death. So through Christ being risen from the dead and Christ preaching that Jesus Christ was risen from the dead to be declared the Son of God with power, the Most High would add Onto his church daily such should be saved and even with that being said Peter never ever made the truth about him he never gave himself a flattering title although the Lord called him Cephas stone he was humble about it that's why he said the elders which are among you I exhort which am also an elder feed the flock of God's pasture. Not by constraint, but willingly. Now there's being lords over God's heritage. That's a lot of these men in Israel with these flattering titles that they gave themselves. They be lording over Israel. Manipulating, controlling, they be putting spells of witchcraft on the believers. The bishop, the elder, blah, 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 blah. They praise men and their fear towards God is taught by the precept of men. Read on, brother. Matthew 16, verse 19. So that was it on there. Okay. All right. And, it, and then in Acts 2, 47, it said, The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So there's more scripture, but all praises to the Most High in the name of Christ of Nazareth. Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. And we pray the Lord of the harvest that he wake up our people, whether they hear or forbear. The Lord, when he saw the multitudes, he was moving compassion upon them because they were sheep having no shepherd. The Lord, he told us to pray the Lord of the harvest because that's another clue. Christ is the Lord of the harvest. He's the one. He's the one that's gathering, gathering Israel. The Lord sitting on the right hand of the Father. All powers and authority subject to him. As a matter of fact, let's finish it here. Let's read Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. We'll end it here. 28 and 18. Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them. And Jesus came and spake unto them. So this is when Jesus Christ appeared unto his disciples after his resurrection from the dead. Read on. Saying, Say, all power is given unto me. So he told his disciples, all power is given unto me. All power and authority was given unto Christ of the Most High. And he was going to continue to exercise this power and authority by ascending to the Father to sit on the right hand of God. So that the same gospel that he began to preach in Nazareth Galilee was going to continue to be preached through his disciples. And he wouldn't leave them alone. 
because Christ said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come on to you. And that began to come to pass when we read in Acts chapter 2. Read on, brother. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So Christ is sitting on the right hand of heaven, running things, and here on earth. So in Acts 2, when Peter and the apostles were preaching Christ, that was the Lord sitting on the right hand of God. He told Peter, get this scripture, get that scripture, get this scripture. Oh, they ask a question, what shall they do? Tell them this, tell them that. Simultaneous, the Lord is opening up the minds of them that are hearing Peter and the apostles preach. The Lord is doing the teaching, the Lord is doing the waking up. One man planted, another man watered, the most high through Christ sitting on the right hand of God gives the increase. Go ahead, brother. Verse 19, Matthew 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. So he said, go ye there, because all power and authority is given unto me. Go ye therefore. I'm commanding you therefore and teach all nations. Meaning teach out of the law of Moses, the books of the prophets and the Psalms of David, like I taught you that I am the Messiah and Christ of Israel. So that covers the word being preached. Read on. Baptizing them. And you're to baptize them. The ones that believe in me out of the scriptures, I'm commanding you to baptize them in water. That's not talking about baptizing with the word. Because ain't no man on this earth that can baptize you with the word. Ephesians 5, 26 says, Christ is the one that's going to continue to cleanse us with the wash of the water by the word. Even John the Baptist said, there's one that cometh after me. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit, the Word, and with fire. Ain't no man on this earth can baptize you with unquenchable fire. That's Christ. Ain't no man on this earth can baptize you with the Word, the Holy Spirit. That's Christ. The only baptism any man on this earth can perform is water baptism. Ain't no man on this earth can baptize you with the Word. That's why we say they false Christ, because they claim it falsely upon an authority that only Christ has. Read on. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So under the power and authority and influence of the Most High, the Son and the Holy Spirit, baptize them. So the same Most High Christ Holy Spirit that spoke through them, Reveal the hearers, reveal the hearers that Christ is the Messiah under that same power and authority and influence, you're the baptized. Read on. Verse 20, Matthew 28, verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. You're to teach the Israelites that believe in me out of the scriptures and that you baptize. You're to teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have what? Commanded you. Commanded you. Read on. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And the Lord will be with those that preach repentance in his name, even unto the end of the world. Oh, end of the world ain't came yet. The scriptures say Jacob, he saw as the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of his death following. Jacob is the beginning that followed Christ. Because the Most High promised Christ, the heathen, and the uttermost parts of the earth for his possession. Amen. So all praise to the Heavenly Father in the name of Christ. With our people here for bear, the word goes out. It's the Most High that give the increase. The Lord told you, he asked Ezekiel a question. Can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, y'all know it's Lord. <laughs> you know, because you're the one that's going to wake him up. So I'll praise to the Most High in Christ. We'll end it there. Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. Whether they're here for bear, brothers and sisters on the, on the live feed that's joining us, peace and blessings to your home. Stay strong. And, and may the Father Christ be with us. And uh, blessings of health and peace to our people. Most High in Christ, bless you, Israel. Thank you. For joining us tonight. Stay strong, humble in Christ, one day at a time. Let's get, let's get going in Christ.
All praises to the Most High in Christ.